Hi, I'm Chris Lebkeman. I've been whittling for a long, long time. And I have several books out on what to do with a pocket knife and tree branches. Uh, five have been published by Fox Chapel Publishing, and uh, three were done uh, before I met Fox Chapel. And what we're going to talk about today is wood. As a carver, of course, as a whittler, I work with wood. This is my tool, and I work with all kinds of wood, mostly twigs and branches. They could be twigs that are very, very small, or pieces that are very, very large. Uh, that's a, a medium, medium-sized twig. But you can get ones that are one-eighth of an inch thick, maybe even a sixteenth of an inch thick. I'm never bored in restaurants as long as I have toothpicks. Because I can ask the server for a toothpick, and she can bring me a toothpick, and while I'm waiting for my uh, whatever it is that I'm waiting for, I can cut it in half and make a Bowie knife for Polly Pocket out of half a toothpick, and a flower, petal, stem, two leaves out of the other half. But most of the time I'm working with twigs and branches, all kinds of branches. There are several things that I want in a branch. I want a branch that has uh, not a lot of knots around the fork that I'm going to be using because a knot, for instance, on where the leg of a heron or a rooster or a pheasant is going to be, that'll make it weak and it'll make it break. But I, want, I don't want a lot of knots. I want a nice clean fork, a nice clean piece of wood. I want wood that has a small pith. The pith is the little soft spot in the middle of the wood. And I want that to be very, very small. If you have a large pith, it's kind of like carving styrofoam and just no substance to it and it doesn't carve well. So I want a small pith, a nice clean fork, and not a lot of sticky sap. I stay away from pine, basically. Now some kiln-dried pine uh, I can use. Uh, that's probably what this is here. It's a piece of construction pine and there's no sap in it now. And I could probably use that. And this, I believe, is some kind of pine, too, and it's left over from some construction project. But mostly I use branches, and most of the woods are hardwoods. Uh, I'd say of the 80 or so woods that I've used worldwide, in Europe and Asia, all over North America, 75 of them are probably hard, maybe five softwoods. The hardwoods generally are better. Uh, of course, when you're working with hardwoods, you, they need to be green, they need to be fresh, otherwise it's like carving a miter box. You, you can't carve a piece of rock hard uh, maple or oak uh, that's kiln dried or has been cut down for years. But a fresher one you can work with. Uh, let me just hold up a few of the branches that I have worked with in the past. This is a piece of maple. Now this is a big chunk of wood here. Now this will be a beautiful like uh, monster uh, uh, hunting knife or, or something. A crocodile Dundee would like this one. Uh, this is also maple. That will be a rooster. Uh, this, very interesting bike, this is elm. has a small pith and it's very, very hard wood. This isn't quite as hard. Uh, this is definitely, this is linden. This is basswood, very popular wood for most carving. Uh, but it'll work for some of the carving I do. This is ash, kind of wood they use for making baseball bats. I have no clue what in the world this is here, and I don't even know where it came from, but I'll have to see if it works. This is flowering plum. It's a very, very, very hard wood, especially nice for uh, making letter openers. Uh, this is a little piece of uh, uh, myrtle I got down in South Carolina about a month ago. Uh, birch, birch. Here are some paint stirrer sticks. Uh, I want to be fair to everyone. Lowe's, Home Depot. Uh, we got, got, got both of them here. Uh, and I can make at least 10 projects out of one of these sticks here by slicing it up and making little, uh, little knives and forks and spoons and uh, pickle pokers and all kinds of things. Uh, and this is a piece of leftover scrap from, uh, from a cabinet shop. This is a uh, pine and that, will be, that can ma be made into little boats or um, letter openers, uh, any number of things from, from that scrap there. 
One of the fun things about working with twigs and branches and a pocket knife is that the raw material is absolutely free. I don't think I've ever paid a penny for one of my twigs or branches, and I've been doing this for 50 years. Uh, this particular little thing here is a birch sapling from the coal mining region of Pennsylvania. Oh, maybe 40 miles north of Harrisburg, something like that. And I've been going up there for years, and with permission, and cutting these little teeny saplings. And uh, they grow like weeds up there. And the one thing I like about them is they're, they have so much potential. This particular branch here, or little sapling, probably has at least, at least $500 worth of potential in terms of projects. Uh, there's a good chance it's a lot more than that, but I'm guessing conservatively $500 because it branches out in very nice Ys. Uh, almost every Y could become a rooster. If I flip some of the Ys over, they become uh, pheasants or herons. Um, I can make uh, pickle forks, letter openers, from the base, from where it's, thick, where it's thick, I can probably make a set of salt and pepper shakers. Uh, uh, but there's so many things that, that are in here. Uh, herons, uh, I mentioned roadrunners, Christmas trees, flowers, they're all in there. See, this is a rooster, that's a rooster, that's a rooster. Or, if I don't want to make this a rooster, I'll make this the legs, tail, neck, beak, and top knot of a roadrunner. Uh, if I turn it over, then it becomes other things. All these little branches here are just loaded with potential. Make many, many little flowers, uh, little trees, uh, teeny-weeny hunting knives for Barbie or G.I. Joe. I don't know. I guess Barbie hunts or G.I. Joe hunts. I don't know. But anyway, you make little, little hunting knives. And uh, so the potential in this one branch is just outstanding. Let me show you some of the things that are in this branch here. I'm going to lean this up right here and pick up this piece of paper. Paper? No. Wood. I, did, I didn't draw on, on paper. I drew, drew on wood. These are some of the uh, shapes that uh, are in this branch that will become certain things. That will become a rooster. If you have two branches that are the same thickness coming out, from the Y, that's a hen. A uh, small branch, maybe chick. The straight branch, that is a letter opener, a knife. A fork turned upside down, that's a heron or an egret. One that has a little bit wider angle. This has a little bit wider angle, that's a pheasant. Uh, a songbird could be almost any one of them. A roadrunner is one fork on top of the other, like this. The tree is just a simple little straight piece. A flower, a little straight piece too. An owl would be just a, a, little, a little cylinder cut out about there. Or down from the bottom would, would make a bigger one. But so much potential in this one branch. If you have a birch around your place and you have an ice storm and the poor birch gets zapped, uh, cry a little bit, but then go out and salvage a lot of potential, a lot of raw material from that down birch tree. And the important tool is this. Kinds of wood, many kinds. And uh, so tr experiment with what you have uh, around your, your house, around your, your uh, state. Because uh, I found many of the woods that I use, I don't have a clue what they are. I just look for small pith, not a lot of knots, no sticky sap, and then I find that they'll work. So I hope you'll try some of these projects, and uh, we'll show you some of the projects in the videos ahead. Have fun.